Hi, this video is to uh, discuss Amiga icon types. It's in response to a thread on Amiga.org website. I wanted to show a couple different types of files and uh, the info associated with their uh, icon type. So, I just got a bunch of crap on my machine here. Um, but let's look at this one here. I right click on it and get its information. Try to drag this down into the center. Sorry, my resolution on my camera is kind of low. Let's zoom in on it a little bit and make sure you're able to see this. Um, so this is a uh, it's a JPEG picture. It's, there's its name. Uh, what type of file is it? It's a JPEG. What is it? It's a project. Uh, version. If you click on that, there's no version string available. You can read it, delete it, write it, etc. Um, if you look over on the second tab, on the uh, icon tab, you'll see its default tool for a JPEG file is S Sys Utilities Multi View, which means that since this is a project, when you double click on it, it will open this file with its default tool, which is Multi View. So see that in action hooray <laughs> that's an old picture of me and my girlfriend at the goth club so let's find another one here um, actually let's do a uh, let's do a program let's do dpaint icons right click on it icons info uh, I'm using workbench 3.9 by the way with boing bags 1 through 4 let's try to drag that into the center of the screen alright so this is dpaint everybody with an Amiga knows dpaint uh, you can actually with uh, 3.9 you can get you can see the two different types of icons uh, if I wanted to change that, I could just drag and drop a new image onto this square, and it would change it uh, while keeping all of its properties intact. But in any case, uh, what is it? It's dpaint. It's a tool. It says the same thing over here on the right-hand side. It's a tool. Uh, it has a version string because it's a program. This is dpaint5. Uh, same thing. I can read it, write it, execute it, delete it. Um, if I come over here onto the second tab, the icon tab, uh, it allows me to set the stack size for the program and um, some of these other where it starts from you can start it if it's a shell script uh, or an AREX script um, the tool types are uh, various configurable settings that uh, you would use for you know the specificity is that a word specificity <laughs> uh, specifications inside of the program uh, you know for setting up some of the different options that this particular program would use um, you can see uh, dpaint has quite a few it looks like a lot of uh, you know where is its palette directory it's in the assigned dpaint 5 colors uh, for example uh, whereas its default pictures dir, which is where it you know where it might save pictures by default, which is the work partition, graphics, dpaint five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So dpaint something that has quite a few tool types. Uh, not every program does, uh, but I'll show you another example of something that does. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, what for crappy games do I have on here? There we go. Uh, this is a WHD load game. Is that centered? There we go. So, Lemmings. Um, name. Uh, default tool, WHD load. Uh, it already knows, uh, because of the assigns and the path that's set up in the startup sequence, it's already able to find the WHD load command. I mean, if I really wanted to get specific, I could say, you know, C WHD load, but it's already able to find this, uh, you know, because it knows the, it knows where the commands are stored. Um, tool types for something like this, uh, the slave, preload, uh, these are some sp sp 
some things that would be required for this specific game uh, on my particular system. Again, this doesn't cor might not correspond to somebody else's system. Uh, you know, I've got no auto vec and some stuff turned on on some of these because of my uh, various accelerators that I've run that I've ran. Uh, you know, if you were using a plain 68,000 system, you might not need to set some of these. So don't use mine as an example other than to just say this is where the tool types are set. Um, or some of them, anyway. Uh, let's give you... Uh, what do we got? Can we find another example? Um, oh, here we go. Mods. Let's see. Got a bunch of mods on here. Um... Let's see, where's one that I like? Oh gosh, it's been so long since I've listened to some of these. Some of this just garbage that I downloaded. Oh, that was a good one that I had. Oh well. Oh, here we go. Well, let's use this guy. Okay, let's right click on this mod, get the information for it. So, what is it? It's a mod. And there's its, there's its default icon there. If I were to view this in, uh, yeah, I keep wanting to say thumbnails. Everybody's so used to Windows terms. You know, if I wanted to view this with the icons, it would look like that. Um, what is it? It's a project version. Doesn't have a version string because it's a mod. Um, over here under on the icon tab, what's its default tool? Its default tool is work, audio, Deli Tracker two. Uh, and then in the Deli Tracker 2 directory, the Deli Tracker 2 application. Uh, it doesn't need to run with any advanced priorities or anything, doesn't need any specific tool types. Uh, let's cancel out of that. And assuming that uh, default tool was set correctly, there you go. So, turn the volume up a little bit. Not one of my favorite mods, but it seems to always be one that's on every computer, uh, every Amiga I have. So, anyhow, let's get out of there. Um, but basically, same thing with any type of project icon. Uh, you know, uh, let's see if I have MP3s set. Um, I only have a couple MP3s on here. This is just some testing. So. You can see clicking on that mod opens the file. Or the this MP3. So, same thing. The default tool is set to Workbench 3.9 Utilities Amplifier, which this is my MP3 player. So in the default tool string this is where I would specify what I want to happen when I click on this icon in this case I want clicking on this icon I want it to open this program I mean I'm sure I could probably set it to something like uh, deluxe paint in which case you know deluxe paint wouldn't know what the hell to do with an mp3 but you know other programs are a little more versatile uh, you know like you can use multi view for a whole lot of different types of tools because multi view is able to play is able to open many types of files uh, you could use it as a default tool for a sound file an IFF a JPEG uh, you know I think I've got even got Photoshop data types installed on here so I could use multi view to open a Photoshop application which I have not tried I'd be curious to see how long that would take uh, Photoshop files are typically quite big um, But uh, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over uh, as far as uh, setting, uh, let's see, oh no, there was one more thing. Um, it, was a, it was a question came up about um, uh, DOS drivers, uh, which are in the uh, your sys devs directory. Let's see, hopefully this is still mostly centered on the screen. So, DOS drivers are partially stored you can store some of the information in the icon and some of it in the uh, mount list file so for example uh, CDO icons info let's see if I have any of these set no nope, nothing set for that one uh, I'm sure something here has to be let's try fat 95 no activate one okay I know where I've got one uh, 
storage. DOS drivers. Let's check. I wonder if this one. No. Alright, here's one in the storage directory. This is obviously something I don't use. I don't have a DKB SCSI device. Um, but this you can see here where, uh, you know, some of the some of the the properties are able to be set through the uh, through the tool types. Um, that's generally only some of them. Like if I open up a shell window and let's see what were we looking at here. So you'll see in addition to the .info file there's a, uh, a mount entry for each of these applications or each of these devices as well. So let's see what this one's got. So this is where the uh, majority of the uh, the mount d properties for this particular device would be stored. Uh, is in the uh, the mount entry file itself, not ne not necessarily in the uh, the info file tool types. Uh, you know, although as you can see, there's you can store some information in there, and you know, it does kind of make it easier for you know somebody that might not be as familiar with working in the shell. Uh, you know, you can store some of the information in there, the device name and the unit number. You know, things that you might need to change regularly. Um, but you know, some of the more specific stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think you'd really want to store your mask and max transfer values as uh, icon tool types. You, you probably could, you know, I can't say that I've ever tried. <laughs> but this is just generally, this is the way that it's always been set up on the Amiga file system hierarchy. Um, to see one more of those, let's exit that. Hopefully this shows up okay, uh, but here's where you can see all of the mount data for my specific CD drive. Um, you know, again, this is something that's going to be variable. You know, depending on your SCSI controller, the type of file system you're running, what version of the OS you're running, etc. Um, so yours doesn't have to look like this. This is just a, a general example. Like you know, my file system is uh, L cache CDFS. My device is techscsi2.device. Uh, the unit number of my particular unit, the way I have it set in my SCSI chain, is 6. Uh, you've got some mask, max transfer values. Uh, most of this other stuff, it says it's unused, or it might, you know, in some of them, I might say don't change this value. Uh, you know, maybe the only other ones you might change might be buff mem type and buffers. Um, you know, if you wanted to, and you can Google this buff mem type, you know. Uh, one to two to three to four it's whether you're telling it to use chip or fast or chip and fast etc um, buffers is you know is obviously how many buffers you assign i think that's 50 of 512 bytes each uh, you know i'd probably i'd have to look that up i don't remember it's been so long uh and this is the rest of the settings for uh a mount list entry for a cd drive but I've really gotten off kind of off course here from where I had intended to record this video to demonstrate. Uh, I apologize. Um, let's see if there's anything else, anything else good I can show you. Uh, distant suns, icon, information. No, that's that's a drawer. Oh yeah, well that's a drawer. Let's show a drawer. Yeah. Um, if you hit the size, it actually will calculate. I forgot I set that funky little planet icon for my distant suns folder. Um, but it, it calculates the size of the data inside of that folder. Um, new tool types for that. Um, if I wanted to change this, let's see if I can find something that I want to change. I don't really... Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see, here's something that I can change. 
really care about this stuff in here. This is just the newest version of the Peter K. Icon Library. But if I wanted to change one, I right click Icons Information and say I wanted to assign this drawer a uh, the newer uh, Ken's Icon style. Uh, with this setup, I can just grab that, drag it on top, changes it automatically. I hit save and you can see it's already changed it in the uh, folder. So that's the easy way of changing uh, an icon image while retaining its uh, all of its existing properties. Uh, like for example you wouldn't want to accidentally turn a drawer icon into a uh, project icon or into a tool icon. Or, you know there's a lot of ways of screwing it up and you know most of them are fixable but it's better to just don't screw it up in the first place. Oh, I don't know, maybe that's, I guess that's how you learn, so I'm not going to say I haven't screwed up a lot of times. <laughs> and that's it. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.